Well, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to all of you practice builders. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. Those of you that are listening live, as well as those of you that are going to join me on the replay, welcome. Super happy to have you. So let's go ahead and jump in. So you guys, I'm sure, have heard that old Chinese proverb that says, if you stay on the road you are on, you are going to end up where you're going. Yeah, so anyway, let's talk about that today. I got to ask, based on that, what road is your business on? What road is it on? And do you like where you're headed? Every business, really, no matter what size, really has to have a plan to move forward or some kind of a roadmap, if you will. So honestly, even if you are, you know, your office desk is in the kitchen, right? It doesn't matter. I used to start, you know, my business started on the kitchen table. So you don't have to be this like big business conglomerate kind of thing in order to benefit from having a plan to move forward. So, um, the reality is, uh, you guys might have heard this statistic before. I myself was pretty surprised when I heard it. The reality is only about one in 10 solopreneurs, that is you guys, have a have prepared any kind of a written plan, right? Or business goals, any, you know, have taken the time to actually write down your goals, essentially. So only one in 10. So we want to try to fix that, right? Uh, we're going to attempt to nail that down today so that you guys can you know really feel like you've got um, a good plan to move forward and when I say plan we are not talking like the 50 page or 100 page business plan that you have to create in order to get a bank loan for example right that's not what I'm talking about in fact I'm talking about the polar opposite really really simple I'm gonna share with you actually let's talk about what we're gonna discuss today so number one today you're gonna to learn the importance of crafting a simple plan versus winging it and essentially hoping for the best number two we're gonna talk about the six foundational questions that you need to ask yourself in order to create your plan and um, the last thing we're gonna talk about is uh, I'm gonna essentially dispel four common myths that kind of are floating around uh, regarding business plans to help you to get busy and really, you know, get busy, sit down in front of your computer or take pen to paper and just get started. So that, my friend, is what you're going to learn today. So again, welcome to everyone, those of you that are joining me live, as well as those of you who are joining the replay. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Leslie Bytel, and I'm a business strategist and coach for dietitians and integrative and functional health professionals. And essentially what I do in my work is I help health professionals health professionals that are in private practice to overcome, you know, that sense of confusion and overwhelm that's so prevalent when we think about the business side of growing a successful and sustainable and profitable private practice. So I help you to overcome those, um, you know, those hurdles, those challenges, all the stuff that we didn't learn in our clinical training so that you can do the work that you love and make a great living doing it helping lots of people, right? That's what we're all here for. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and dive in. Um, you know, I'd love to know, just to start, do you have any kind of a plan? No shame, no judgment, just a simple yes or no. Do you have any kind of a plan uh, from which your business operates? Guys, it could be as simple as a list of, you know, smart goals. Like, that would be awesome. Sometimes those are the absolute best kind of business plans. So just give me a simple yes or no. Do you have any kind of written plan? And it could just simply mean that you've got a list of goals that you want to try to achieve for the year. So, all right, so let's start by talking about, I want to start talking about the importance of crafting even a simple plan for your business versus winging it. So again, to clarify, we're not talking about this super formalized, you know, super long detailed business plan. 
I'm actually not a fan of those kinds of plans. I mean, I suppose they could serve a purpose, but um, I find that those aren't super helpful for the most part. And a lot of people, they get stuck, right? They are into the perfection of creating this amazing, if you have a plan, right? Remember, only one in 10 actually do it. But unfortunately, sometimes that, you know, that small chunk of us that actually take the time to write a plan, we kind of go to the opposite extreme where we it's way too long, way too detailed, and it really doesn't end up helping us. So we really want to try to avoid that as well. We want to kind of be in the middle, right? Have like a living, breathing document that we can go back and uh, revisit and kind of recalibrate our, our direction in our business. So, so you don't need this big elaborate business plan unless perhaps you're trying to get, you know, a a bank loan, for example, right? In those cases, perhaps you do need something a little bit more formalized. So instead though, my preference is that you try to keep it relatively simple by creating uh, really time bound specific goals for your business, even over the next five months. I mean, we're already well into, obviously we're well into July, right? So even the next five months, I think, or four and a half months would be awesome. So let's just try to break this down into kind of a, a doable time frame. All right. So let's talk about what, you know, how would one go about doing that? So what I think I'm going to do right now, I've put together a list of questions that I think will be helpful. And honestly, if you can answer these questions in your business, I really think you're good to go, right? Again, you know, we want a plan that is, you know, something that you can revisit periodically. Like ideally, you're going to pull out this document maybe every couple of weeks just to make sure that you're on target, revisiting, you know, where you are in the process. If we need to, again, revise the plan based on perhaps maybe new opportunities that have cropped up. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, these six questions that I think will be super helpful for you to move forward. So first of all, what is your business all about? Okay, just what is it all about? You know, who really it's just like a mission statement, <clears throat> right? Why does your business exist? What is the purpose of your business? Number two, who is your ideal client? Okay, so who is your ideal client? Who are we targeting inside of this business? So very important. Now, here's the reality. You don't, it's great if you can niche down, right? It, that is super, in, it's ideal, right? If we can be really super specific and um, certainly not be trying to serve the entire universe, right? We want to be niched down enough so that you can, you know, really succinctly describe what you do and for whom. Um, but regardless of where you're at in that process, try not to get too hung up on this. Like, if you don't, like, just just wing it, right? Just just put down on your paper who do you think your ideal client is. You know, we don't have to get really super detailed in terms of demographics. We're not really creating an avatar at this point. Just in general, who is your ideal client? Um, number three is what are the challenges and struggles that your business solves for them? So what are the struggles and challenges that your business solves for them? This is super, super important. And we really want to look at this from the, uh, from the perspective of your ideal client. So we ideally, we're going to answer this question. I mean, you can go down the clinical path, right? You can be super hyperclinical in describing what these challenges are that you help people to overcome. But what I'd really prefer that you do is talk about this more from the perspective of your ideal client, right? So like, what is keeping them up at night with worry? from their perspective, right? Are they laying in bed going, oh my God, my hemoglobin A1C is too high? Probably not, I'm guessing. Maybe some people, right? It, I don't wanna rule that out completely, but like for your average person, I'm gonna guess they're probably laying in bed at night lamenting about, you know, having, you know, their jeans being too tight, like all their clothes are feeling awful. They don't feel good in their own skin anymore. You know, they're feeling withdrawn. Um, 
uh, socially because they just are embarrassed. They, they're embarrassed about putting on their workout clothes because they just don't feel good, right? Um, they are probably laying in bed beating themselves up for, you know, trying really, really hard to stay on the diet. And then, you know, maybe they're skipping meals, skipping breakfast during the early part of the day only to find themselves binging at night and they just can't see the pattern. And so, you know, maybe that's what they're laying in bed lamenting about, right? Kind of beating themselves up over falling off the wagon, so to speak. Remember, it's from their perspective. Okay, so, so far we have, what is your business all about? Why do you exist? Who is your ideal client? Just, you know, in general, who is that? What are some of the challenges and struggles that your business solves for them from their perspective, meaning from your ideal client's perspective? What, and number four, is what tangible goals are you headed towards in the next 30, 90 days? So just, you know, over the next month, over the next three months, it's really great if you can break this down. Um, you know, maybe even create some SMART goals for yourself. You guys remember SMART goals, right? We do that a lot for our clients. So why not do it for yourself as well? So what I would recommend is that um, you, here's what you could do. You could brainstorm a list of SMART goals um, for the next four and a half four and a half months ish, right? To get us through the end of this year. And then you could make a decision of those SMART goals. Which ones do you want to tackle first? Which ones do you want to try to tackle in the first 30 days? Or if those SMART goals feel really big, maybe what you do in those cases is you can look at each of those goals and say, hmm, what's it going to take? Like, maybe I need to come up with a list of tactics to support each of those bigger goals to ensure that I actually get there. And maybe those are the things that you break into like a 30, 90, you know, like a 30 day plan, 90 day plan, um, and, you know, four or five month plan, something like that. But somehow we need to, uh, we need to try to ensure that we have tangible goals that are measurable, right? Just like we do with our clients. So that's really what I want to encourage you to do. So let me give you like an example or two. So this could be, you know, that you set a goal around the number of new clients that you enroll in your signature program. Like that would be an awesome goal. Or it could be that you make a goal around how many clarity calls, discovery calls, or enrollment conversations, kind of that, that preliminary conversation that you have with a potential client before they decide to move forward and work with you. So maybe your goal is, okay, I am going to book, you know, at least, you know, six clarity calls or six strategy sessions each month, right? Um, so maybe that's your goal. And then you say, okay, so what do I have to do? Like, what are the tactics that I need to put into play in order to be able to get this number of strategy sessions each month? So do you see how this works? Right? So it's, um, these goals really build on each other. And I got to tell you, those are the best kind of business plans. If you ask me, um, Okay, so maybe, let me give you another example. Maybe your goal is to uh, launch a program, like launch a group program, group coaching program, or maybe you've got a course, okay? Maybe you've been thinking about a course and your goal is to get it to market by the end of the year. That would be an awesome goal too. So if that's your goal, like that's your big overarching goal, write that down, give yourself um, a deadline, a date. What is the date that your class is going to start? And then we reverse engineer. We ask ourselves, okay, what are the different steps that I need to take in order to ensure that I achieve this big overarching goal, right? And it's really great, guys. The more specific you can make it, the better it's going to work for you. All right. So those are a few examples. So we want to write down tangible goals that we're heading towards. Again, ideally over the next, you know, 30 days, 90 days, and I would say for the remainder of this, this calendar year. Okay, so number five, what are your income goals? 
do you have an income goal? Like, what are we shooting for here in terms of actual income and revenue? So I would recommend the way to go about that, and really this is probably a good idea uh, with all of your goal setting, is to give yourself like what would like a um, kind of like a small, medium, high kind of goal. What's the least, like what is the amount of revenue, like the least amount that would make you happy for the remainder of this year? Okay, write that number down. What would be kind of like in the middle? You know, you'd be happy, you know, you'd be really happy. It's a little bit of a stretch, but it's realistic. And then what would be a stretch goal? So I would have three different numbers for that for that particular income goal. Okay. I think that would be uh, really helpful. And then number six, what tasks and actions are required and by when to accomplish these goals? So guys, we already talked about this a little bit that we need to have supporting, um, you know, actions like more tactical things on our business plans uh, in order to support our big overarching goals. And, you know, on that note, I just want to share that uh, I've shared this in a previous live. I think I did one, I want to say in January on my, I think I called it the six by six by six methodology. And basically, you know, just a quick recap, this was the most helpful plan I ever did. I, I worked in um, like a, a group coaching program. And the first thing that the mentor asked us to do was to get clear on our goals for that amount of time we were going to be working with her as uh, in a group format. And so she asked us to write down, you know, what are six big overarching um, smart goals that you have for your business? <clears throat> and then for each of those big goals, what are, you know, maybe five or six supporting goals? What are the things that need to happen in order to ensure that those big goals are going to be met in your business? And it was super helpful. Like, that's really all you need, in all honesty. I mean, the other stuff that I talk about, I do think you need to know your ideal client, right? You do need to know, like, why are you in business? Uh, and then certainly you do need to know like, what are the challenges that you help your clients to overcome? And then in terms of like goal setting, really try to think, um, try to break it down so that it's attainable. It feels good. It's a little bit of a stretch, but it, you don't look at it and you're like, oh my God, why even bother? I'm never going to get, you know, you don't want to do that to yourself either. So that's actually why I like the small, medium and high approach because it's, it gives you, it's not all or nothing. It's not black and white in terms of whether or not you achieve the goal, because there's a lot of shades of gray in there too, right? Okay, so basically, you know, having a written plan gives you clarity and focus, and that's really why it's so important. And you'll, therefore, you'll actually be able to accomplish your goals faster and more easily, and it gives you measurable objectives so that you can actually you know, evaluate how your business is doing over time rather than just completely winging it, right? So if something isn't working as you had hoped, you do have an opportunity then to revisit your plan and again, recalibrate. So that's what I really like about it. And, you know, probably most importantly, having a tangible vision is going to give you enthusiasm and the motivation and inspiration to really take your business to the next level, especially in those times when you're facing a new challenge or maybe stretching out of your comfort zone. So those are additional reasons why it's super important. So here's the other part. An official, as we've already established, an official business plan can kind of sound a little ominous, right? So there's a few things like I, I promised that I would cover four myths that we're gonna bust right through today uh, to help this feel more comfortable for you. And hopefully it will you know, enable you to actually sit down and take action. All right, so myth number one is I have to buy an expensive business plan software before I start. <laughs> so how many of you have said that to yourself? Well, I need to you know, go you know, maybe look online and you know, find some kind of business planning software before I actually write a plan. Okay, not true at all. I think you guys know by now that that is not true. 
you know, in fact, I started with a yellow legal pad and a pencil and sat at my kitchen table. And I just tried to, you know, I took 30 minutes and tried to outline these things. Boom, done. Any word processor will do, right? So you don't need any special, um, you don't really need any kind of special software to do this. Certainly not. All right. So myth number two, my business plan needs to be perfect and 40 pages long with a beautiful cover before I can move forward. <laughs> of course, we know that one's not true either. It's a living, evolving document that will change as your business grows, for sure. So don't try to get it right. Don't, don't get stuck in that perfection, which I know a lot of us really kind of struggle with. Just ditch perfection and just start writing. That's my best advice. Number three, myth number three, um, I have to do everything on my plan, otherwise I'm a failure. Okay, that's that perfection, all or nothing, black and white sort of thinking. And that's, we know that's not true. That's, you know, there's lots of shades of gray in there, as I already said. And that's why, again, I like the idea of, you know, setting small, medium, and large goals. I think that really, it kind of takes the pressure off. It's, um, yeah, and it gives you, it gives you options, right? Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to look at that goal and just completely psych yourself out and say, oh my gosh, it's so unattainable. I'm not even going to bother trying, right? That is not good because we really want these goals to inspire and motivate you. So set a uh, small, medium, and large and um, see where you land. Okay. So uh, number four, myth number four Oh, I love this one. My family and friends are the best sources for feedback on my plan. Oh, that's a good one, right? Because a lot of us as entrepreneurs, we're kind of working alone, right? And a lot of us only have like our spouse or significant other partner, you know, maybe parents, um, friends, family, cousins to, um, to bounce our ideas off of, right? And Here's the reality, though, <clears throat> as well-meaning as these people may be, and I'm sure they're very well-meaning, um, those close to you are typically not the best way to get honest, objective guidance, in all honesty. Um, there are books. I mean, you could certainly look at books and websites, and, you know, you can get information on small business plans. You could, you know, certainly what I did was hire my own coach and mentor, which absolutely catapulted my business beyond my wildest dreams. So the, the bottom line is friends and family, mm, not so much usually, right, in terms of being the best people to bounce our business ideas off of. I mean, especially if they... Well, first of all, the businesses that we create are very unique, right? It's not like we're selling a widget, right? So it's very, very different. We're selling ourselves and what can make it even more challenging. In many cases, we it's, it's not really even a tangible thing that we're selling, right? We are, and we're working with quite often very sick people who have, you know, they're human beings, right? So it's a really different kind of business. So even people like friends and family who are entrepreneurs themselves may not be the greatest um, match in terms of trying to, you know, get assistance and, you know, bounce ideas off of because it's just like this kind of business in terms of building a private practice, it really is truly unique. So anyway, so, so that's it. That's what I have for you today. So um, uh, my challenge, I guess in a nutshell, my challenge for you is to take 30 minutes, okay? Take 30 minutes, sit down and begin to craft a business plan for yourself. Just give yourself 30 minutes, like literally turn off all distractions and just say, okay, I'm going to sit down and start this process and I'm going to give myself 30 uninterrupted minutes and I'm just going to see what I come up with. You may end up working longer, but the minimum is 30 minutes. Okay. And, um, and just see what you come up with. If you already have a plan, what I would recommend is that you dig it out and evaluate how the plan is going and make any adjustments to make sure that you're on the right path, right? 
Um, because, you know, it's hard to believe, but this calendar year, like, I mean, I'm already planning my fourth quarter, which is absolutely insane. Very, very, it goes by very fast. So if you want to end the year, you know, strong, then now is the time to plan. All right. So I would love to find out what you think about this idea. And um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so next steps, if you're curious and you'd like more information, drop me a line. Uh, you can go to lesliebytel.com. I just put my website there for you guys. Go ahead and visit me on my website and uh, go to the contact page and just drop me a line. Or you can find me on Instagram at Leslie Vitel. Uh, I would love to hear from you. Give me a DM. I'd love to hear. Honestly, what I'd really love to hear is do you have a plan, yes or no? And I'd also really love to hear, just get a sense of what you're working towards. What, what are you striving to achieve in, in the remainder of this year? And I just, um, what I have found, not to go off on a tangent, but I will. <laughs> what I have found is once I tell people about my plan, again, like, you know, maybe you want to just tell me, like drop me a DM and say, hey, Leslie, here's what I want to accomplish. What I found over the years is that when people do that, when they kind of put it out into the universe, not to get woo woo, but <laughs> when you put it out there, um, you really like it becomes stickier. You become more committed to that plan and you actually end up following through. So give me an idea as to what you want. How do you want the end of 2020 to look for you and your business? Let me know. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. I love spending my Thursday afternoons with you and I'll look forward to seeing you next week. All right. Bye for now.